What was the fallout from the murder of Billy Batts, the mobster who inspired the central murder in Goodfellas? Batts became involved in organized crime at a young age. He was known for his ruthlessness and was considered one of the most feared enforcers in the Gambino family. He became a close associate of John Gotti, a capo and rising star in the family at the time. However, his criminal activities eventually caught up with him, and he was sentenced to a lengthy prison term for his involvement in organized crime activities. His time behind bars would later play a significant role in the events that led to his murder, as tensions and rivalries with the Mafia community came to a head, resulting in a tragic and violent end for Bats. The scene in which he is killed is one of the most memorable scenes in the film. It tries to capture a brutality and violence that was an integral part of the Mafia's lifestyle. In Goodfellas, Billy Bats is portrayed as a hot-headed and arrogant mobster who had recently been released from prison. He is shown to be a former mentor of character Tommy DeVito, but their relationship had soured over time. In the film, Bats was killed by Tommy. Jimmy Conway fell in a brutal scene that has become one of the most iconic moments in the movie. According to Nicholas Pileggi's book Wise Guy, Bats was beaten to death with a tire iron by Tommy Desimone, Jimmy Burke, and Henry Hill. They then wrapped his body in a plastic bag and put it in the trunk of Hill's car before burying it. Scorsese chose not to show the murder scene in graphic detail, instead opting to convey the brutality of the event through the reactions and emotions of the characters. Scorsese has said that he toned down the violence in Goodfellas to avoid glorifying it, as he felt that the audience might become desensitized to the violence if it was depicted too realistically. He wanted the audience to feel the impact of the violence without being overwhelmed by it. What real-life events led to Billy Bat's death? Rumor has it, the events that led to Bat's death were more complex than the portrayal in the film. It is believed that, while Bats and Tommy Desimone did have a falling out in real life, the actual cause of their conflict was related to business. Specifically, it is said that while Bats was in prison, Jimmy Burke muscled in on his loan shark business, a detail that is only hinted at in the film. When Bats was released from prison, he went to Crazy Joe Gallo of the Colombo crime family to get his business back from Burke. However, Burke refused to give it up, leading to a conflict between him and Bats. This version of events is corroborated by Hill, who is an associate in Paul Vario's crew together with Burke and Desimone. While the insult over shiny shoes is a memorable moment in the film, it is likely that the actual cause of Bat's death was related to his loan shark business and the power struggle within the crime families. The murder of Bats highlights the violent and cutthroat nature of the criminal underworld. It was a significant event in the history of the Mafia, triggering a landslide of unfortunate events for many of its members. In the world of organized crime, there are often many theories and rumors about who is responsible for a particular crime. This is certainly the case with the murder of Tommy Desimone, which occurred in 1979. While some press reports claim that John Gotti and his crew were behind the hit, Greg Buccioni believes that this is incorrect. Instead, Buccioni thinks that Jimmy Burke was the one who ordered the killing of Desimone. According to Buccioni, Desimone was murdered at Burke's home in 1979, while Burke was busy covering his tracks in relation to the infamous Lufthansa heist. At the time, John Gotti was investigating Burke and Desimone's involvement in the murder of Billy Batts. Buccioni believes that Desimone's murder was simply a way for Burke to eliminate a potential liability. Buccioni's own background is also worth noting. He is a former child prostitute who came forward as part of a ring that served former Penn State assistant coach Jerry Sandusky and the late Philadelphia businessman Ed Uncle Eddie Savitz. Buccioni has appeared on the Dr. Phil show and made headlines when he came forward as a former child prostitute. However, some have questioned Buccioni's reliability as a witness. In his book about Philly mobster John Vesey, Author Ralph Cipriano found Buccioni to be spectacularly unreliable and determined that his stories did not seem to be based in reality. Despite this, Buccioni still maintains that he knows what happened to Tommy Desimone. In 2013, Jimmy Burke's former home in South Ozone Park, Queens was excavated by the FBI in search of human remains. While the FBI believed that they had found something, it is unclear whether they were able to definitively link any remains to Desimone's murder. As of today, Desimone's body remains at large. Despite the controversy surrounding Buccioni and his credibility, his theory regarding Tommy Desimone's murder by Jimmy Burke cannot be completely dismissed. The mob's code of silence and the lack of hard evidence make it difficult to confirm or refute any theory. However, the fact that Burke went to great lengths to cover his tracks in the Lufthansa ice and the murder of Billy Batts lends some credence to Buccioni's theory that Burke was also responsible for Desimone's murder. The murder of Tommy Desimone remains shrouded in mystery and speculation. While some believe that John Gotti and his crew are responsible, others, like Greg Buccioni, 
Think that Jimmy Burke was the true mastermind behind the hit. Regardless of who was responsible, one thing is clear. The events surrounding Desimone's murder continue to captivate and intrigue people to this day.